Turquía. Hey Blake, this is Craig from Inprint. Uh, it's one o'clock my time, which makes it around ten o'clock your time. I was calling to go ahead and do that interview, but you're not around. So just give me a call when you can. My number is four zero seven three eight one two five two two, and we'll hello? see about. Po hello. Hello. This is Blake. Hey. Hey, how's it going? All right. Were you sleeping? Hello. Were you asleep? No, it's, I was juicing. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't hear anything. Okay, that's cool. Do you feel up to doing it now? Sure. You sure? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let me, um, let me just grab something, all right? Yeah, go ahead. Justin, you on? Yeah. Okay. Juicing like with a juice master? I just got a juicer. Is it good? It's so rad. That's awesome. Yeah. What are you juicing? I got some uh, carrot and celery and an apple. Is that good? It's the best. All together? Absolutely. Wow. It all gets kind of buried in the mix. So it basically tastes like sweet carrot juice. Huh. I like carrot juice. Yeah, carrot juice is rad. Huh. Okay. Good. Right. Blake likes carrot juice. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know if you know much about what this is all about. Um, uh, we're, we're a newspaper for the University of Central Florida. Um, did Adam tell you any of this stuff? Um, no. Okay. Not really. Um, we started this newspaper this past uh, fall um, because we were fed up with the other paper that's on campus. Justin and I, the other guy who's on the phone with me, uh, also do a record label here called Inbred Records. We've done a mail order for a year and a half, which we just stopped, and now we just do the label. Really small label. We only have one seven-inch release, and we're working on a CD right now. But uh, ever since we started the newspaper, we've had this desire to do like a punk theme issue since we're pretty much in complete control of what goes into the paper. So for the past couple months, we've been working on putting it together because we don't want to fuck it up because it's so important to us. Um, and so we've set up interview. We've done interviews with Tilt, uh, Butt Trumpet, uh, Larry at Lookout. Right. Working on doing one with Tim over at Maximum. Uh, I talked to Mel at Shredder, but uh, he's not much of an interview kind of guy. Yeah. Um, and then uh, who else have we done, Justin? Uh, we, we're doing something with No Effects, but it's weird because what we're doing is we're interviewing three No Effects, uh, three Epitaph. I mean, we're doing something with Epitaph, but we're interviewing three Epitaph bands as opposed to interviewing oh, yes, yes. Brett. So we did no effects and SNFU, and we got to still do Pennywise. But so that gives you an idea, and then we're gonna have articles on like Riot Girl and Homocore and all different kinds of stuff that have to do Punks with the scene. The movies. What's it? Punks in the movies. Yeah. Just, just the whole movies. Yeah. Yeah. So kung fu movies. What's it? Kung fu movies. Oh well, we do kung fu movies, but but what he had mentioned was punk movies. Mm. Yeah, but we love actually we watched kung fu movies last night. Kung fu movies are way more punk than punk movies. Yeah, well we we review uh, normally a kung fu movie a week anyway. Oh really? So yeah. Cool. Yeah. What kung fu movies do you like? There's a new Jackie Chan movie out now. I have a kung fu date today. Do you? Oh. Very good. With our drummer. <laughs> have you seen much of the the Tai Sing stuff? No. That's what you need to see. Gosh, it's so funny. I think. Oh wait, Justin. We can't. We can't. Yeah. Oh yeah. We can't answer. It. God damn it! I wish I had stopped the call waiting. Yeah, they're a company out of San Francisco actually, and they're a marketing firm that uh, markets the uh, stuff from from Hong Kong. Uh huh. And uh, we have. I don't know if you're familiar with the band Mu Three Thirty, but uh, they're a ska band from like uh, St. Louis or something. But the, anyway, anyway, they're staying here, and we were talking last night about. Uh, about kung fu and he's like yeah we, jackie chan and i was like wait you got to see this and it blew him away so you've got to see some of this stuff it's it's i think it's way better than i mean only jackie chan Justin, you've seen kung fu rascals and drunken master too right yeah jackie chan's like more like jerry lewis type karate this is just amazing like flying karate this is like friggin comic book brought to life 
awesome. It's it's pretty rad. Yeah, I think you'd like it, and it's right there in San Francisco, so you probably could hook up. Is it on video? Yeah, yeah, and you can you can, I don't there's I'm sure there's China. You got a big Chinatown, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go down there and go through the video places. The problem that Any, we anyone with like the, the actor Jet Li in it. Or, Jet Li's um, badass. Uh, Jet Li. What's that? Maybe I have seen some of it. I'm really into Jet Li. Yeah, Jet, oh, are you? He's, he's, yeah. Jet Li's been in some with uh, Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. Yeah. But uh, like some of them, like Feng Sai Yuk mm -hmm. and Iron Monkey. Iron Monkey. Amazing. New Legend of Shaolin. Yeah. So, all right, cool. All right, well, let me get this thing going. Um, the goal, the reason we wanted to interview you guys, um, well, one reason because you recently signed, um, and we wanted to not so much interview you from the point that you probably get nervous about in interviews is you're a bunch of sellouts, but more a sense of where's it going to go from here kind of thing, um, because I personally don't give a shit. Yeah. Um, so, all right, well, let's just go ahead and see where it takes us and get this thing going. Well, when did Jawbreaker first get together? Um... 89. And how did that happen? I would say, I, you know what? I don't even know. Oh. It was a long time ago. Oh, yeah, that is a long time ago. In a city far, far away. Where, where did you guys form? We met in New York. Okay. We were all going to uh, NYU. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Did you guys end up finishing? Chris and I did, and Adam went back to UCLA. Okay. Where he finished. Why, why did you end up in San Francisco? Um, it was kind of a happy medium between... L.A. and New York, okay. where we were living, respectively. How do, do you miss New York? Totally. Do you? Yeah, I would kill to be in New York, and I probably will kill to be in New York. Yeah, why, why aren't you there then? Um, because I'm doing this fucking band. Yeah, it's but they, they have no desire to up and move? We, it's too expensive yeah. to live there, and it's really hard on a band, I think, to have equipment and a van. Right. Well, Adam, Adam's married, right? No. It's, he just has a girlfriend? Yeah. And how about you? I'm so single. Okay. Uh, well, both of us are, too. Then we can talk. Yeah. Um, Worse. And, uh, or maybe it's the best. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm sad. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, happy exactly. Valentine's Day. <laughs> how lonely was it? <laughs> oh, it sucked. We went and played mini golf. That's rad. <laughs> I know it sucked. <laughs> I'm so mad we didn't. Our friend had this total loser party. They all got drunk on vodka and watched pornos. So... That, fun. that probably would have been more fun. Okay, let's see. Uh, since since the band formed, has it been pretty smooth? No, it's it's been war all the time. In like what sense? Any stories? Well, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. I don't know. We would like fight like crazy, and and then uh, we had some pretty brutal tours. Yeah. And I guess it's, I should say it's smooth. Though. I mean, we've been really lucky. For being together for so long. Yeah, and being, you know, having people actually like us and listen to us right. pretty immediately. I mean, if that's, you know, that's fortunate. Yeah. But we've had some pretty <clears throat> pretty wild adventures as well. <laughs> How would you guys describe your music? Oh, wait, I had to do this last night. Did um, you? A, a meteor crushing your heart. <laughs> oh, man, that's horrible. Isn't it? <laughs> Who'd you have to do that for? Uh, I don't know. Someone asked me that same question uh, in a mail interview. Uh, and I, you know, I hate that question. Oh, yeah. I just asked it because I was curious if what, what you would have to say. I'd, whatever. Um, Actually, I'm, are, are you taping this or are you writing it? Yeah, we're taping. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry. I didn't let you know ahead of time. Because I would also say that if I really had to describe it, there's this kind of nicotine... Um, caffeine gum from Japan called Black Black. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that stuff? I think I've seen it. I've never tasted it. If we could be like that, it would be cool. <laughs> it's like black gum that just wires you. Okay. Wow. And it's got the coolest package. It's like Oakland Raiders packaging, but with Japanese writing on it. You're so poetic. Black Black. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so you guys are on Geffen now, right? Um, well, we're not yet. Oh. But probably within a matter of days. Okay. Uh, any chance you can talk about the contract? Um, yeah, I guess. Tell me everything still... you can tell me that you don't mind having printed. Well, we're getting a shitload of money. Okay. And, I mean, I'll just be upfront about that because, you know, there's no way to play it off. How much is a shitload? 
Um, I don't, that I don't. Okay. It's hard to say that because it it wouldn't make sense. Okay. But it's enough to make a record. Okay. Pretty lavishly. And um, we just we got everything we wanted basically. How many record deal? Three. Three record deal. Three firm. I mean, it, it's all different when you kind of break it down. Yeah. Um, but basically, we asked for like a ludicrous number of things mm -hmm. being money and control and um, and they gave you control they gave, they gave us everything so we were kind of surprised you know we we're like well we'll just ask for the, like this insane thing and and then we won't get it and we'll just do whatever we want but it ended up being like sure mm -hmm. so um, yeah I mean we, we do our work we do you know pick our producer pick our songs um we have a guaranteed release date. When when is that release? Well, we're starting in March, <clears throat> so it should be within three months after. Okay. So summer, should, probably end of July. Yeah. Okay. Do you uh, do you feel that it's going to be difficult for the band to keep their head in the same place you always have been? Because of the, I mean, the major changes you're going through in terms of the scene that you are working in. Maybe not the scene so much that you want it, that you would consider yourself a part of, but so much like the people that you're working with, the amount of money you're making, um, the, the kind of uh, people you were working around. Do you think that you, up top, uh, when you're doing your music, when you're hanging out with your fans, that it's the same? Um. I don't know. I mean, I think the idea is that everything is going to be the same, except the actual process of making the record, mm -hmm. who's you know delivering the record. I mean, we're we're still doing our own tours. We have the same booking person that we work with, and none of that's affected by your label unless you let it be. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. When you sign to a label; they don't have any control over your shows or whatever, unless they they're really owning you. Um, so the idea for us is to just do our record and then go on a basically the next the same kind of tour we would have done last time. Yeah. Probably like slightly bigger halls because some of them were were oversold. But um, in that sense, I don't think it'll change. I guess if something really crazy happens with the record, then mm -hmm. things are going to get weird. Do you, do you think that'll happen? I'm, not really. I mean, it's a, it's a really grim record. I think it's going to bum people out. Well, you, you've always been pretty vehemently against the corporate thing. Um, yeah. And I'm sure, uh, I'm, this, these, are, these aren't my own feelings, but this is from having talked to other people. Um, you're going to be called a sellout, probably. Oh, believe me. And I've, already. Yeah. Um, how, how do you deal with that? I mean, it's, I, I don't know, it's got to be pretty disturbing to you. It, it kind of was, and then... I found that the people that were saying that to me the loudest were like people that really never liked our band or you know give a shit about that stuff anyway mm -hmm. I mean like really rabid punk rock people you know yeah that's what I'm getting it from and I, I don't have any connection to that scene anyway I, mean, I don't listen to rabid punk rock music right you know I listen to like <clears throat> death rock well like for instance like what Bobby and Bobby, uh, Bobby is Fred. Um, you were pretty close with the, with that guy, right? Mm-hmm. And after you signed, uh, they were pretty pissed off. Um, does that hurt your feelings? Do you that think was a, that was a weird one because it was like kind of a personal friend. Uh -huh. We didn't really. We met him. I mean, we were with him. I don't know if you should print this, but okay. Like well, tell was, you don't want me to. Yeah, just because it's kind of personal. Okay, that's cool. But I'll tell you anyway. Okay. I mean, it was... He was down in L.A. with us when we went to talk to a lot of these labels. And he used to work at a major label. Okay. And uh, so he was kind of... He had all these opportunities to go, you know, I think you guys are really making a mistake or I think you're really contradicting yourself. But he was just kind of hanging out. And like, you know, we talked a lot about it and how we were freaked or whatever, any concerns we had. So it was kind of a surprise to then, hear, you know... Like three months later, he read this thing he wrote. And, yeah. You know, he was really upset. I wrote him a long letter and um, he apologized. 
Hmm. Yeah, I was when. Uh, well, I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure you remember the Warner Brothers rumor from about a year ago. Um, There's been a, a few. Oh well, yeah, and I remember many people saying how you were. Oh, well, yeah, actually, in your the show that you did. Uh, hang on, because I have the live tape of it. Um, I forget exactly what date. It was out in California. I'm guessing it was Gilman. Uh, you actually said something on stage about uh, not signing. I'm not trying to get down on you. I'm just uh, just curious. Um, you yeah. Said, well, no. I mean, I definitely changed my mind. Yeah. You know? and I, are, are you as an insane person? I reserve the right to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like I, I'm a fucking Gemini. You know, I've got multiple. <laughs> I'll blame it on disorder. the on the astrological sign. Yeah. No, because I I think it's the, the hardest thing in the music scene is to avoid being a hypocrite, and I think it's impossible. Um, it's hard when you're going on record a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, it's hard when you're popular. It's hard when you're in in the public eye. Yeah, I, you know, let me let me tell you again that I, I'm not saying these things because I think that what you did was wrong. I'm just curious. Cause no, I know. Okay. I, know. I mean, I, I, you know, I can appreciate the devil's advocate. <laughs> and I mean, a, well, a, a lot of this decision for us too was that we we needed to do we needed to go to another label because our label just couldn't do it mm -hmm. anymore. Okay. And you know they couldn't really do the the volume. Actually, that's the next question. Uh, not to cut you off, but it might be easier just to do it all at once. Uh, what are the differences that you see between Shredder to Tupelo to Geffen? Well, Shredder and Tupelo are one person labels more or less. I mean, Tupelo has a little more has other people working there, mm -hmm. um, so obviously it gets a lot more impersonal and. <clears throat> but at the same time, it's like whenever we worked on a label, we did everything ourselves. Right. And basically only, you know, talked to the label about dates and, you know what I mean? I mean, we were friendly. Mm -hmm. Like, I consider... Well, Gary, you and Mel, you and Mel were pretty close. Yeah, Mel, Mel and Gary held both. I mean, I consider friends. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, we'll go out to dinner once in a while or whatever. But it's really like more of a working relationship. How do so, those labels feel about you signing? I think they're pretty into it. Well, actually, no, I, I know Shredder hates it. Yeah. But um, I think Gary at Communion or Two Blows is supportive. Yeah. And I think he knows it's going to help him. Yeah, well, Mel's got an interesting mindset, so. Mel's hardcore, you know. Mel, Mel tried to explain to me how Reagan fucked everything up in like an hour-long ramble on the phone, and I was just like, should I be taking notes? He, he never, he lost me. He goes off. Yeah. <laughs> And the way he says it, it makes it sound like he's got to be right. Oh, yeah. But, but I still had no right. fucking clue what he said. I love, that's why I love that guy, because he's just a wingnut. Yeah, he's... He, he aggravates Justin, people. there's that word. Wingnut. wingnut. I've heard that word a lot in the last couple of days. Yeah, he's yeah he's an interesting character. Yeah, he wouldn't do an interview because he doesn't like those things. Mm -hmm. It's weird because it was almost cocky, but in a way that I couldn't think he was cocky. But he put it that he couldn't really do an interview because people don't understand the way he thinks anyway kind of thing. That he understands everything so much better than everyone else. Right. That for me to talk to him about punk rock would be pointless. Because the reason I wanted to interview him was because how Shredder is a label that actually supports him, uh, as opposed to people who always say that you can't be in the punk scene and make money. And I say, well, no, you, you can, because there are people like him and Cinderblock t-shirts and all these other people who actually do it for a living. And he's like, no, you wouldn't understand. And then he told me about Reagan. I, I got confused. He scared me. I don't know. Anyway, that's off on a tangent. Uh, this is a question I'm asking everyone that we interview. Uh, when you use the word punk, what do you mean? The enemy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not interrupting. You go ahead and explain. Um, what do we, What does it mean? I don't know. It doesn't mean anything to me anymore. I'm tired of that word, especially this year. Yeah. I think that. This year, that word is dead. Okay, well then, then, then let me move on. Move on to the next question. When when you flip on MTV, um, and Green Day pops up, and Ricky Rackman or whoever it is says, "Here's the latest punk video from from Green Day or Rancid or Offspring," how does that feel to you, honestly? I was well. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. When I first saw that Green Day video <laughs> last year, like when they were just kind of introducing it, right. I was really. 
what apprehensive about seeing it. You know, when I heard that it was going to be on everything, I thought this was just going to be too weird. But then when I saw it, I thought it was really good. <laughs> and I totally got off on it, like, because I think it was pretty genuine and really spastic. So I dug it. And it surprised me. Like, I didn't think I'd have that reaction to it, but I watched it and I was like, fuck, that's like really, that's exciting. In terms of like short film or video or whatever. Right. I just thought it was like, it was so high energy and it blew everything else away so hard that I was into it. Um, as for like other bands, I don't, I've never seen a rant. I don't have MTV, so I don't okay. see any videos. Okay. But, you know. Um, <laughs> then that question won't work for you. I think it's definitely weird though. Yeah, I. It's, I mean, it's all kind of mainstream and above board. Yeah, because it was weird when Green Day first signed. I know I got pissed. I mean, I had friends who were like throwing out their shirts, and and I was kind of like, you know, oh, that fucking sucks. I mean, I didn't burn anything, but and then as time went on, I thought it was really cool to be able to put on MTV and see Green Day as opposed to seeing Counting Crows mm -hmm. and uh, like watching Conan O'Brien have Green Day on there. You know, as opposed to another band who I don't like. Because as far as I'm concerned, Green Day still sounds good. And if I have the opportunity to hear them when I might be hearing something that I don't like, I like that more. So, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'd say the same thing. I mean, I'm glad that the, for the way that, like, commercial music is, has changed. You know, in that a lot of hair bands and stuff have been replaced by <laughs> whatever indie rock bands. Yeah, even alternative even rock. Whatever, or mediocre or, or obvious or whatever. Right. It's still better for That's now. That's true. Will we be seeing Jawbreaker videos? What's that? Will we, will we be seeing Jawbreaker videos? I don't know. I, I mean, I think we're going to do one, but we're we're having a really hard time figuring out how to. We want to make it like a movie, and we want to get a film director, and we. Because we're all like film freaks, you know? Don't get Spike Jones. No, I think we want to get this. So, okay, my secret fantasy is to get Don Coscarelli. Don Coscarelli? He's the guy who directed Phantasm. Oh, really? <laughs> and I want to do a Phantasm, like, mortuary thing playing off the orb, like the Geffen orb. Oh, my God. And then, like, the ball with spikes. <laughs> Wouldn't that be rad? That'd be a trip. Like a total gothic horror video. That's great. You guys ought to do like a fucking death metal song for it. Totally. Well, I don't know if the song... We've got some death rock songs. Do Not you? Not metal, but like gloom rock. Oh, so be man. Kind of appropriate. Oh, man. Do you guys watch any full moon movies? Any what? Full moon movies. Full moon movies? Yeah, full moon entertainment. Don't know it. It's a... Actually, you probably really like it. It's B-style movies done clean. They're really well made, but it's B style. They're uh -huh. not. They're not too campy, but they're not too serious. So you can really. The last two we saw were Shrunken Heads, which is by Richard Elfman, Danny Elfman's brother. And it's Shrunken just, Head. Yeah. yeah. It's just funny. It is just. It's great. And then cool. there's Oblivion, which is like cowboys and aliens. Uh -huh. Instead of cow oh, it's just, they're just amazing yeah, movies. They're cool movies. Um, I wasn't going to ask you about this, but I guess I will. Um, do you feel that your music's changed much? Because you had surgery, right, on your throat? Yeah. Um, well, what, how how'd that happen? Is it just from years of singing? It was well, yeah. I think I was singing, and then I was I was living the life. Like I didn't sleep ever, and I was yeah. you know do you I didn't do drugs or anything, but I was like pretty crazy. So I would like I just thrashed myself. Did and it I ended up developing this callus? How pleasant. Yeah, it was really ugly. I mean, we were kind of in the middle of the tour when I figured it out. Did it? Was it painful? Yeah, it hurt a lot, and I couldn't sing to save my life. D do you think that since the surgery that the your your vo vocals have changed much? Yeah. They have. I mean, I, I don't know if it's so much the surgery, though. It's like I've, I'm writing a lot differently now. Mm -hmm. And I'm writing in, a, in an area where I don't have to scream as much. Okay. Which I like. I mean, I don't know. You know, people obviously, old school fans will probably be like, could perhaps have problems with that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I know I like the old vocals more. Uh-huh. Um, but then again, I haven't really listened to the new album that much either so um uh 
Oh, well, I'm, sing, I'm singing a lot more now, basically. Yeah, that's good. Um, Whatever that means. <laughs> it's pretty. I'm making pretty fey music for mm. art fags like me. <laughs> there you go. I'm serious. <laughs> it works. Um, do you do all the lyrics? Yeah. Where Where do they come from? Um, journals mostly. Or so it's all line. pretty personal. Yeah, yeah, they're all personal. Do you feel that your lyrics are going to be discussing the whole major label move at all on the new album? They are, definitely. Okay. I know that's kind of, everyone does that, but it's like, you can't help but think about it a lot. Are you going to be trying to justify yourself through your music, through no, your lyrics? not really. There's just songs about, there's a couple songs about how weird it is. Mm -hmm. What a bizarre experience. Any songs telling people pretty much to fuck off, kind of like a... Maybe know the name of the song on Unfun, but the one about if you don't like our music, don't put it on the shelf kind of thing, uh, where if you don't like that we're on a major label now, piss off. Um, I don't think so. Yeah. I think there's... Well, there's one just about about that whole thing, but it's not really a fuck-off song. It's more like a later kind of song. Yeah. It's a little more passive. That's cool. Um, do you think you're marketable? I don't know. Just we'll have to see how the record sounds. I mean, I don't think visually we're very marketable. I think that uh, I think that some of the songs are pretty, you know, they're as catchy as any other stupid songs. Mm -hmm. What would be your first single? Do you think that? I don't know. I'd have to hear how it comes out. Any chance of bringing up some old songs? No, we're not going to do anything old. Okay. Um, okay. Actually, we're winding down to the end. Um, Tour, when, where? Hopefully in, um, well, this summer. Okay. When we finish the record. I mean, I don't think we'd get out east till the record's actually out. Okay. Because it'd be kind of stupid to tour ahead of it. Do you think it'll be more comprehensive now that you're on a major? Because you've never played, at least in the past few years, uh, Orlando. Yeah, they play. We were out of town. I think you guys did play here. No, I don't think no. we did. No, we were out of town when they played Gainesville. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we've really only been to Gainesville and Tampa like years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we're weird because we only we only like to tour like four weeks tops, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it'll just be ugly. So we kind of go, we do these really quick, fast tours. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Yeah, I think we'll... we'll try and do more maybe we'll just do like a whole more extensive east coast thing and then stop and right. yeah. take a break do you uh <clears throat> when, when you used to tour before where would you stay would you just crash at people's houses we did no we did a lot of um motel six did you yeah. um okay well then we had like question. a roadie if we get four of us in a room it was 30 bucks and it would be just much more sleep you know yeah well, okay, then maybe maybe this will be a better question. Um, do you feel that when you're going to be touring and playing maybe bigger venues than before uh, in places where it wasn't always such a big venue? Of course, I'm sure in San Francisco, you fill up some pretty big places, but maybe somewhere like a North Carolina show or a Florida show or something where you're going to be filling bigger places because more people will know you. How do you think you're going to be able to, or do you think you will be able to, stay in touch with your fans? Um, I know I went to an Offspring show uh, to see Guttermouth. Well, we get into most shows for free anyway, so we'll see some pretty bad shows just because it's free. And I looked around, and I was, I was sad. I was so sad to look around and realize... I finally understood why I hated all these people, and it's because none of them thought like me. I was there for a different reason. I was there because I liked the bands, I liked what they did, I, and I could appreciate what they did. Whether it's because I did a mail order and I could relate to the work that's put into doing something like that, and so on and so forth. And then most other people around me were there because it was on MTV, or because their friends said it was cool, or because they surfed, and Offspring was a cool thing if you surf. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that's going to happen with Jawbreaker? Do you think that you well, might get a little it jaded? Has, you know? yeah. No one understands that. But it's like people say, oh, you're going to have frat boys and jocks at your shows. It's like, man, we've had frat boys and jocks at our shows since day one. Yeah. And in the past two years, a lot more. Right. So, Does, 
does it bother you? I mean, when when people come up to you and talk to you more because you're, you know, quote unquote rock star. Um, um, I haven't really gotten that. I mean, people usually don't talk to me. <laughs> They're scared you know, of you. Which is, but I guess it will bother me if that happens. I mean, if it's if it has nothing to do with what what we do musically, then it'll bother me, right? Yeah. You know, and I've definitely met people that are like fucking right on, man. You know, mm -hmm. rocking yeah. or whatever, which is kind of silly. I guess so. Yeah, um, it can get annoying. It can get annoying. I'm I'm very much into having a lot of people at our shows, mm -hmm. and it's kind of the same argument I think of like, you know, preferring to see certain things on TV just because they replace something worse. Mm -hmm. It's like I try and it'd be nice to believe that like those people. Well, they're at your show and they're not at a, you know, Michael Bolton show. Right. Or whatever. Gotcha. Or they're not, you know, like date raping on a football field or something. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever they... They wait until after the show. And Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. And yeah, I think usually it's pretty much lost on those people. They go to, like, beat the shit out of each other and around. Yeah. I got a question. How do you feel about the real, like, diehard fans? Like, I, oh, my old roommate... Um, or old next door neighbor too, almost got a job the jawbreaker symbol tattooed on him. Uh -huh. How do you feel about things like that? Does that like weird you out? It's it's a little intense. <laughs> I don't know. I know I know I met a lot of people with tattoos from like different you know seven do you, inches or. Do whatever. you think they're stupid or? Um. Well, I have one. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. Not really. I mean, I you know like Chris, our bassist has. Like an Articles of Faith tattoo. He has like bands that he loved. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have friends who do that with mm -hmm. like cool logos that they also like or whatever. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you must be riding on a pretty big ego trip. I'm not, not for a second. What's it? Not for a second. Really? I hate myself. <laughs> That's so horrible. Why, why is that? I mean, you really, you really are unhappy. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I'm single. Yeah, but it, it's, it couldn't be all that. Well, it's a lot of it. Yeah. It's a lot of it here. I mean, were you single dating lovers. before, and now you're recently single, or? Um, yeah, it was, it was. Well, no, it's been about a year, so I'm really starting to freak out. Hmm. Why is that? I mean, it seems like someone like you should be able to have no problem. Is it? Are you too picky? I don't know. I just don't meet people. Yeah. Or like, I mean, I'm in San Francisco now. It's kind of weird. It's like more older, icy. You're too interior, Blake. Urban vibe. You need to expand your horizons. I'm interior, but I'm working, too. I'm working go to coffee shops. <laughs> I've been, like, going nuts on this record. Really? So I'm like, I go to the studio by myself. And just... But no, I mean, you really are that unhappy. And that's... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I'm just manic, you know, so I'll go through, like, the elated periods where I work really hard, yeah. everything's rosy, and then I'll just bottom out for, you know, weeks. That really sucks. Hell. Yeah. yeah, but it's okay. I mean, I'm working, so I know it's going towards something. Yeah, well, that's cool. Well, good deal. It's always start, been that way. We could start personals for you. Yeah. What's that? We'll run personal ads for you in the paper. Date Thanks. Blake. Mail order Florida bride. That's He's what I sexy. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I don't, Justin, you have anything else? No. All right, well, I think that's cool, unless you have anything you want to add. Um, uh, no. Anything you've been dying to get off your chest? Excuse me? Anything you've been dying to get off your chest, do you want to say to anyone? No. <laughs> okay. Not that I didn't say it. <laughs> not Deal with it, Mel. It, you know, it would only be to one person at a time, probably, so it wouldn't okay. be a proper forum. Okay, the P.O. box that I should mail anything to is 411324? Yeah. Okay. Then as soon as it comes out, it's coming out on the 28th, I will send you guys a few copies. Cool. And all Thank that. Thank you very much. All right, all right good sure. deal. Well, Blake, if you can, try to keep in touch, and if you guys are in town and you don't feel like doing the Motel 6 thing, you've got a place to stay. So. Right on. And, uh, yeah, and you'll get a copy and all that. We'll send okay. you a copy of a karate movie, too. Yeah. Yeah, we'll send you a copy of a couple movies, so. That would be rad. All right, good deal. All right. All right, Blake, take care. Take it easy. All right, Bye. see you.